What's up guys? How you doing? It's James here from J Ray Games and I'm back with another video tutorial and this one I have gotten so many requests for and I figure I have to do it while the people are asking and that would be Euro or American Truck Simulator 2. I'm going to show you how to hook it up to your PSVR and how to get it working. It runs beautifully so stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. Okay, so today we're talking about Euro Truck Simulator 2, which is a fantastic driving simulator, uh, which was not ever meant for VR. In fact, v VR has been in beta for several years already without an official release. However, it is possible to tweak it to make it work with the PSVR. It's not as super simple as you may think. It's not like we can just plug it in and go with it and, and, and start playing it. We do have to do a few things in order to get it to work properly. But I will say this, once it is working, it is a fantastic experience. Now today I'm gonna to be playing it with the NOLO uh, tracking system. However, if you have the new version of Trinus, you know in my last video you can do the positional tracking uh, just with your webcam, or you can use the ping pong ball on the head technique that I show in my other videos through PS Move Service. That works as well. But for ease of setup, just so I can show it in the tutorial here, I'm going to use Nolo because it works really well and I don't have to worry too much about setting it up. I also got my Thrustmaster T150 here is really going to help with the realism aspect of the game. I've got my pedals down on the ground, so stay tuned. I'll show you how to get this set up. Okay guys, so now we're ready to actually try out the um, a Euro Truck Simulator, and uh, up to this point everything is pretty much the same as we've done in previous videos, so I'm not going to show that all again. But I do have Trinus up and running, and because I'm using Nolo, I've checked that off, and I've got the Nolo software running. Uh, you could be using positional tracker, you could be using PS Move service with the uh, ping pong ball, whatever you want, but basically just get it all to that point where it's going to run, it's going to work, and um, next we're going to actually look at how to set this up. So we're going to go into Steam, and there are a few very important options in order for this to work properly, otherwise you're not going to get this to go. It's just not going to work for you. So pay close attention. Um, first of all, once Steam loads up, we're going to actually check out the game and you would go and download it, obviously, uh, purchase it from Steam. Um, but here we go, we're coming into Steam here. If you've already got it, it's going to work with what you've already, what you already have. So we're gonna go to games and you'll see that I've got both Euro Truck Simulator and I've also got American Truck Simulator. Let's do Euro because that's the one I've gotten the most requests for. So obviously we're going to download it, and if I right click the game, I'm going to go to properties, and I'm going to go to betas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the latest beta version, it's called Oculus Vive 1.3.0 SDK 1.4.0, and I'm going to hit close, and it should, sorry, I'm not going to hit close, I'm just going to put that, and it should download that version. Very important. The next super important thing is to make sure that you don't have Use Desktop Game Theater turned on because if that's on, it's going to actually show in kind of like a cinema mode. It's not going to be VR. It's going to be just like you're looking in at a movie. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Set Launch Options and you want to put Dash Open VR and you're going to hit OK. All right, once all of those things are set, you're going to hit Close and we're going to get ready to actually launch this. Now, there is a very important trick here that I use to get it working really, really well. What I do is I go, first of all, and launch Steam VR and get that running. Okay, so now we have Steam VR running and it's loaded up properly and we can see that we've got positional tracking with the NOLO, which is actually just sitting on top of a box in front of me here, in front of the steering wheel, so that I can uh, track my movements uh, properly while I'm playing. 
And I'm going to do the usual thing and select my headset window and just send it over with the shift windows, right arrow. Okay, so now it's over on the headset. Now, here's the tricky thing with this game. And it took me a long time to figure out how to get it to run properly. All right, I've got Steam running, I've got everything running, I've got the command lines, I've got the beta version loaded up and all that good stuff. But here's what you're going to need to do. You're going to go into your game and you're going to run the game normally first. You're just going to go and play the game. All right, I could do it with DirectX. That's actually better for my card. So let's do it that way. And it's going to give you a warning saying that it does not support VR. It'll appear on your desktop and may affect VR performance. Just ignore that. Just hit OK. And you'll notice that the game starts to run. All right, now here's the weird thing. It's going to take our whole entire window, and you can hear it playing, but you don't see anything. What you have to do is hit the button F11, and that is going to bring it onto your screen so you can see what is playing right now. Um, it's the intro and all that good stuff. Now, when you get to this point, actually when you come into the game, you're going to create a profile. All right, you're going to get to the stage where you create a profile. You're going to get that all set up. And as soon as you finish that, you're going to actually hit escape. And you're going to quit the game. You're going to say, yes, I want to quit. Seems really stupid. Why would we do that? Well, it's because what it's going to do is going to create all the configuration files and the profile on your computer so we can go and tweak that now. Now, we're going to leave everything open because we're going to come back to it in a second, but we're going to go to our PC and we're going to go to our Documents folder. And inside there, you'll see I've got a folder now called Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'm going to go inside there and I'm going to open config.cfg with Notepad. So double click that. And inside here, um, there are a lot of options as far as the way that it plays but one in particular that is super important and I personally found that if I didn't change it it didn't work or it worked very poorly you'll notice that if you leave it at default and you play it in VR it's gonna look horrible I hear a lot of people complaining say oh man this game looks brutal it does unless you make this change alright now depending on your graphics card you'll be able to make this number higher or lower until you find that kind of sweet spot where it plays good but here's the change. It is this line right here. You set our manual stereo buffer scale. By default, it'll be set to 1.0. But I've set mine to 1.75 because that looks really good with my current system setup. We can also change the field of view and the distance view. I left that at default and it looks great. So we're going to set this a little higher. And then we're going to close this and we're going to save it. All right, now I'm going to pause right here because I can't actually show you the game playing unless I have a mirror window set up on another display because this game is going to take up the whole screen. I can't actually show you. So what I'll do is I'll get it loaded up again and I'm going to launch with DirectX 64-bit. I'm going to wait for the black screen to come up uh, oh, the message comes up, does not support, say okay. The black screen will come up. Here it comes. It's just loading. And we're going to hit F11 to, oh, sorry, actually we got it on the screen. Everything's looking good. We've got it where we want it to be. Now, what you want to do is you will notice that right away it's not in the headset. Okay, it's not showing up yet until you get... I usually wait at this screen right here uh, 10 seconds 15 seconds whatever it takes until you see something show up in the headset and then what you can do is you can press F11 because what F11 is doing is it's switching this display this screen that we see it's split switching it to the headset all right so that's where I'm gonna pause right now and then I'm gonna set up my mirror so you can see exactly what I see okay so I'm in the game I'm gonna press F11 and there we go, now we can see that same screen showing up inside the headset. Now this is where it gets fun, because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
switch over to my Thrustmaster with the headset. And I'm going to take a look through here and I'm going to hit continue game. And it's going to put me in my semi. Hopefully you guys can see what I see. That would be cool. Now the thing I really like about this is that it works really nicely with the Thrustmaster here. It's, uh, it's really, really excellent. Uh, I recommend setting one of the keys on your Thrustmaster or whatever controller you're using to uh, recenter view. It's useful. And uh, it might happen from time to time where you need to reset your view. But as you can see here, uh, I am inside the cab of my truck and it's raining. And it looks like I'm sideways in the road here. It's horrible. But you can see that this is set up really nicely because I've already tweaked it and done all the options here to make this look right. I've got some horrible radi radio station playing on here as well. Now here's the keys you're going to need to know. Um, F1 is very important. It's the menu uh, that comes up. And what you can do is you can turn on your side mirrors if you really want. I, I think it looks horrible. I turn them off. Okay, you can turn on or turn off the uh, root advisor. I turn it off. Okay, and F1 by pressing it again will take you back out. Now your keys from one to nine gives you, oh, look at the wreck, look at me. Shows you some different views around your truck. Some are really cool, but to be honest, one, which is first person is the best for VR. Um, another very important thing is F4 and you have to press it a few times you can do mirror adjustments you can do all sorts of cool things but the thing I'm looking for is this one right here my seat adjustments this allows me to change how close or how far I'm sitting in the seat how far up and down okay gives me a lot of adjustments here to make me feel like I am in the driver's seat of this semi. I'm gonna close that because that looks great. And now let's get driving. Let's let's do a little bit of driving. I turned on my rain probability quite high because somebody suggested that that really gives you a much more higher immersion level. And I agree, it looks awesome when it's raining. Uh, so you can adjust that in settings. What I recommend you do though is you turn off uh, your anti-aliasing and um, you go with a setting that is going to work well with your computer. That buffer scaling which is at 1.75 makes this game look ridiculously good. Um, I could probably go higher and make it look even better but right now at 1.75 I've got no lag whatsoever. Turn my head. Feels like I am driving this rig. I don't even know if I'm allowed to go here, but I'm gonna try, okay. All right, oh, I shouldn't have braked so hard. I suck, oh no. I must have, oh no. I got an engine malfunction. I've never had that before. Oh boy. Well, this is embarrassing. Maybe I'll load an old game so you guys can see. Oh, no, I'm driving again. Here we go. I'm going again. <laughs> oh, I was anyways. Here we go. I, I'm, I'm really rough on this uh, semi, so I'm assuming I've probably damaged it with all the crazy driving I've done. But the cool thing about this, if you haven't played this game before, it's the most realistic truck driving simulator. In the Euro version, you can drive across most of Europe. It's unbelievable. Uh, in the American version, you can drive across most of the US which is really really cool um, and it it works really great in PSVR it looks great um, I know a lot of people complain about PSVR being only 1080 but it looks fantastic alright no complaints here at all I'm not getting any sort of motion sickness or anything weird and I don't have any judder or stutter it looks awesome and actually, even though I'm doing this video, I want to just keep playing because it is so fantastic. Anyways, I'm going to pause it right there. So as you can see, that works amazing. 
and uh, pretty easy to set up. It, it took me a little bit to figure out the exact settings to get it to go properly. But once you have it running and once you've got it working, it works great, it works every time. And I think it's a fantastic addition to your PSVR PC game library. It's pretty cheap too. It's only 20 bucks uh, Canadian, so it's even cheaper US if you're watching from the US. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Um, I had a lot of fun with this game and I'm still going to be playing it quite a bit, so um, I strongly recommend it. If you enjoyed that video, if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment, and I will help you out as best as I can. Till next time, thanks for watching.